Uh, now that we have the unit apart and uh, we've taken any broken parts and thrown them away, uh, there's no, in my opinion, there's never any sense keeping broken parts. I mean, <laughs> uh, some people do. We'll put it back together in reverse order. So the last thing we did was we pulled out the motor post. So the first thing to do is put it back together. Um, as you can see, the wire is kind of running back the post here. And that was all inside of uh, the little slot that it goes in. So what we'll do is we'll hold this connector out here to make sure it doesn't pull any more in with it. And we will slide that thing right back in its little home. There it goes. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna plug the motor wire back in. Again, green to green, so that the motor goes the right direction. Now, speaking of motor direction, um, the four motors that are on this unit, uh, there is right-handed and left-handed motors. And it has to do with the way the brushes uh, contact the commutator, it's not a brushless motor. And if you use a right-handed motor where you should be using a left-handed motor, you're going to wear out the brushes a little faster. So when you're replacing motors on this unit, make sure you order the motor that goes in the correct place, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, I believe they're, yeah, they're denoted by the colors of the wires. This particular motor has red and blue wires on it. Uh, an opposite hand motor right here you can see has black and white wires on it. So those two motors uh, travel in opposite directions. And, and the props as well will give you a hint as to which way they go. If you look at the props, you can see if there's, you know, this prop spins clockwise, this one spins counterclockwise, this one's clockwise again. And when this one goes back on, it'll be counterclockwise. Uh, the two motors opposite each other always turn the same direction. So we've got the arm back on. Let's slide the motor cover back on and we'll put the connector through it carefully and just slide that on. There's really nothing to hold this in place until we get the motor holder landing foot back in place, um, which is next. And what we will need to do is fold this wire back now so that the foot can go back on. There it is, back in place. Now, here's the motor. We will take the motor and slide it back down to its little slot. And make sure it's fully seated, clear to the bottom, because when we put the gear back in, it's got to mesh with the gear. And what I'm going to do is, if you look on the side of this part, as you can see the little slot. And what that is, is that helps give the wire some place to go so you can connect it without it taking up too much room inside of the motor cover. Okay, so we'll bend this around and we'll make sure our two red sides line up. There we go. I thought my bifocals were failing me there for a minute. Okay, so we've got the motor plugged in, wires in its little slot, and then we're just going to push this right up on here like it was previously. And that motor, that uh, wire will come out the little slot. There's a little slot right here in the side of that holder. And we're just going to push that up until it kind of snaps into place. You can see there's a little clip over the motor here to keep it from coming out. And that part's back together. Last, what's left to do is to put the propeller and the gear back together. And what I like to do, or the easiest thing to do, is to just go ahead and drop the propeller shaft in there instead of trying to hold the gear up there in the right place. Put the propeller shaft in and put the gear on. And remember, the long, the long side of the gear faces down or away from the propeller. And also remember, there's a flat spot. See the flat spot on the gear there on top? That's what has to line up with the flat spot on the shaft. So we'll put that in there. Hold down on it and just push it into place. And if we look at the finished product here, we can see the gears are lined up, they're meshing, everything's turning. The shaft isn't moving up and down any. We took the play out of it. Everything is ready to go. Now, what we've done while replacing these parts, 
uh, including the one prop we changed from black to white, is we have mechanically changed this unit from X configuration to plus configuration. And the reason you would want to do that is the plus configuration is a little easier to fly. It's because the arms are longer in the plus configuration in the flight axes, meaning uh, forward and aft and right and left, the controls are just a little bit easier, a little bit smoother. When you're in X configuration, the arms, because of geometry here, they're just slightly shorter and now you've got two props in the front and two props in the back and it makes it a little more aerobatic. So some beginners will want to start in the plus configuration. Uh, some intermediate and advanced flyers will want to start immediately in the X configuration, which is the way it comes out of the box. Now the final, final thing to change here to move the unit from X configuration to plus configuration is to put the canopy on. On the canopy, what you'll notice is there's several holes in it, okay? There's three holes on each side, one in the front, one in the back, and then three holes down the other side, same as the first side. And what that allows is, if you're gonna fly in X configuration, you're gonna use four of the holes to snap it on like it was before. And it's basically just push the canopy down onto it like so. Now if you want to go to, to plus configuration, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the canopy 45 degrees counterclockwise so that it's lined up with this white prop. And now you're using the front and the back holes so that it's ready to fly in plus configuration. Now, you might ask yourself, what if I get confused? What if I, what if I put the props colors on in the wrong places? Um, we have something for that. So I will take this off again. And we'll get a close up here. If we look at the PC board, there are two little arrows right here on the board. And you'll notice one of them is pointing directly in line with this arm and that's your plus configuration side, note, noting the front of it. And then the other arrow is 45 degrees off, pointing intermediately between these two arms, and that is your X configuration front, okay? Now this also is handy because if you have to replace the PC board, those arrows tell you how to put the board back in correctly. And to help you with that, because what, if you t uh, disconnected all the connectors and you pulled the board off, basically you've got nothing there except for the props, maybe, maybe the color of the props to tell you the correct orientation of the board. Well, we've added one more little feature to help you remember which way it's gonna go. If I turn this thing over, and I'm gonna pull the battery out a little bit so it makes it a little easier to see, you'll see the battery has a little nub right here on the front, okay? And it's, it's lacking one back here, okay? That little nub right there tells you that's the front of the quadcopter. So that is the front in the plus configuration. So if you keep that in mind, when you're putting your new board on, then you know that that arrow that's pointing in line with this arm has to be the same one that this little nub on the battery uh, holder is pointing at. So there's a few different clues that we build into this thing to make sure that you don't get lost in the middle of it. Um, if you forget that, lose your instruction manual, et cetera, I'm, I'm sure one of the customer service people will be more than happy to, to help you get the thing realigned. So now that we have one white prop on the front and all the rest black, um, our board is there, everything is hooked up. The only thing left to do is put the canopy back on, and as I said, with all the different holes in the canopy, it's already set up to work in plus or X flight mode. So you just put it on now in the plus flight mode, snap it down on there. Little battery connector hanging out there. And it's ready to fly again. It's all one piece and ready to fly. Um, like I said, a little more responsive in X flight mode a little smoother in plus flight mode. So it's up to you as a pilot to decide which one um, that you prefer and uh, have fun with it. Uh, these are a really great for flying little machine. Uh, they're very stable, but you've got lots of control authority if you want it. So 
please enjoy your MQX, fly it safely. Uh, and if it needs to be fixed, you can see how easy it was to fix here today. Thank you.